Good morning. I'm Taylor Kambuzi, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. We'd like to extend our thanks to INN for sponsoring this session. Our next presenters are Peter Schlu, President, CEO, and Director, and Mitch Lavery, who's the Principal Geologist of Heritage Mining Limited. Heritage Mining is a brand new private, precious, and base metals explorer focused on its Black Lake Drayton project in Northwestern Ontario. Peter and Mitch, you'll have about 15 minutes for the presentation, then we'll have a Q&A session afterwards. Please take it away. Hey, hello everyone. Thanks so much for taking uh, the time out of your day to listen to our, our story here in Northwestern Ontario. Um, moving, uh, moving through the presentation here. Oh, oh dear. <laughs> okay, legal disclaimer, uh, please refer to the, the presentation on the website. Um, this is kind of fully disclosed and standard, standard procedure. Um, so overall, what do we have? Um, we have a project in Northwestern Ontario, uh, close to Dryden and Sioux Lookout with, in our interpretation, uh, early indications of four mineralized zones, each showing uh, in and of themselves over a million ounce potential. Uh, we are undervalued relative to other public comparables out there, even though we're private. Our pre-money valuation is approximately four and a half million. Our top tier, we have a top tier land package. Uh, north of 14,000 hectares in Northwestern Ontario through via option and another uh, project contact Bay in the similar region of approximately 4,700 hectares. Um, we have a fantastic management team that has significant, a significant track record, um, you know, over the, over their years of experience, uh, specifically two directors uh, associated with the Trelawney sale to I am gold uh, 585 million in 2012 and also we have uh, Mitch Lavery, um, part of the Bell Creek and Juby Gold Mine. So great to have them uh, part of the part of the story. Um, our cast position, uh, approximately at this time, is 1.2 million, and our share count is is uh, 18. So very well, kind of stacked up um, to take to the next step. Um, recent news: we've also filed our preliminary prospectus, so that's uh, very exciting, um, and kind of the first step. You know, along along many through to the path to to going public, hopefully before June thirtieth, twenty twenty two. I'll kind of move on here. So, notable kind of where are we? We're on the uh, Wabagoon sub province of the Superior Province along the Abrams Minitaki Greenstone Belt. Notable deposits are the Rainy River uh, deposit through to Cameron and our adjacent project Treasury Metals. Um, very exciting uh, project to be close to. They've had some great results at their Goldland deposit, which is showing similar geological characteristics on ours as well. Um, notable to point out here is that we're very close to infrastructure. We have a railway going over the top of our property that is very close. We have paved highways going through the property. There is well-maintained all year round logging roads and ATV trails as well. Um, this is different from, you know, other projects such as, you know, Spring Pole or, or other ones in, in Northwestern Ontario where you need kind of ice roads. We're very easily accessible um, and kind of puts a nice feather in our cap as we uh, continue on our, our exploration path. Um, moving on. So again, this is a, a great summary. And again, I'd point to our website um, to kind of review this in, in aggregate. Um, we've mentioned that we're close to Treasury. Um, furthermore, there's 176 drill holes. Um, on the property that we're currently compiling um, and looking at uh, to explore systematically. Um, there's also a lot of surface work that we'll go into uh, briefly as well. Um, Mitch will comment on the, uh, the geology of the project on the later slide once we have a nice graphic. Um, again, we're in a mature mining district. Ontario is a fantastic place to be. Notable though, it's, a, it's expensive to operate. Um, hence why we're we're taking this thing public and and uh, glad to have Red Cloud as the the lead kind of the lead sponsor and agent uh, for our project. Moving on, this is a great slide um, showing how much work has been done on our property over the years, um, and no one has looked at it from a systematic, well, number one consolidated and then systematic approach from a low grade high tonnage perspective. There is. Um, a treasure trove of fun facts in here that we are currently working through and overlaying in, in kind of 3D so that we can develop a, a systematic target approach. Um, so again, like a lot of, lot of people have been on this property in, in small increments, but 
in aggregate, no one's really looked at this, this entire package um, the way that we're looking at it. And it's a newly developed area, again, adjacent to treasury metals, and we're just kind of extending along the trend. So uh, great to be here. And now we can dive a little bit more, more into, um, into the project. So now this is a, a nice graphic with some bed bedrock geology, again, showing us kind of close to treasury metals and just, just on trend um, along, along the north, uh, northeastern park. Um, we've identified four areas shown here that we can go into in depth um, in the moment. So I'll kind of move move on. Um, and then I'll, I'll I'll pass it over to Mitch on the, maybe we can talk about, Mitch, we could talk about the overall geology. Um, we are uh, time sensitive. So if we could just uh, speak to that and our kind of overall plan, and then I can move on. Sure. Uh, I guess the best way to put it is, is we're into something's very typical uh, of North, Northern Ontario, it's, it's Archean greenstones with associated uh, intrusive rocks and uh, associated structures that occur in, in every gold camp, okay? So what we have are we have these uh, Northeast, uh, Southwest shear zones. We have the four zones. Number one is the Meretti, number two is Split Lake, number three is Alcona. And number four is what we refer to as the shaft zone. So what we have here is these shear zones with quartz carbonate injections as stock works, veins, veinlets, whatever, with uh, free gold, sulfides carrying gold, and um, usually, usually uh, what we've seen to date is, uh, I'll talk about them ready first, uh, High grade, narrow uh, quartz veins, veinless, and stock works. Same thing at Split Lake, uh, same thing at Alcona, down the shaft zone. We presume it's the same thing. We haven't seen a whole lot down there. Peter and I did a due diligence visit up there, spent, I think it was four or five days up there, and uh, I was suitably impressed by it all. So our, our uh, approach is going to be. We're flying the whole property with uh, airborne magnesium, and we will uh, take a look at that when it's completed, analyze it, and, and uh, pick out our, our target areas. We presume uh, the priority target area will be Moretti. Uh, secondary target area will be the Split Lake Alcona area, and then send in prospecting crews, and if necessary, we feel uh, we may do a little bit of uh, maybe uh, ground IP, induced polarization. And from there, we're, we're proposing that by the first part of uh, the fall, we will have a drill on the property, drilling our priority targets. Okay, hey, great. Thanks so much, Mitch. So now we can just, uh, we'll go through and, and briefly summarize each area. So Mitch and I again, you know, we we've uh, we both went up um, same time and did a, a detailed due diligence visit. We went to 17 of the 21 mineralized occurrences available publicly, um, and just kind of consolidated it and put it into a nice graphic, um, overlaying with bedrock geology. Um, to the north northeast of the project, we have our historic bulk sample, 8,000 kilograms at 14 and 4,000 kilograms at 18 grams. And then a lot of surface work all the way through. This is about a six and a half, seven kilometer trend here that we're uh, looking to advance. So this is kind of our primary target area. And again, just to, just goes to show about the, the easily accessible um, nature of the project. We have been on ATV roads all the way through to the Moretti zone. Very, very easy to get to, very well maintained. Um, one reason why we're flying EM and MAG as well um, just to further on Mitch's point, is that there is a hydro line going right through the property that's at the foundation um, part of the construction right now. So we thought it was very important to, if we're going to wave the flag that we're developing something systematically, we need EM and MAG flown over the whole project, which ha has never been done before. And we thought that that was a good, good, good starting point, especially because, you know, as you know, the, um, the readings are, are distorted if there's a, a live power line, a major power line going through. So we thought that that was important and kind of goes to show that, you know, we're, we're here to advance the property and, uh, and continue on. Uh, again, this is a graphic of one of the bulk samples. So as you can see, it's a lot of, a lot of grown in historic work that has been done. This is consistent throughout the property. 
Um, this is a, a, a busy slide, but it's, it's very interesting because we've just acquired the Alcona Mine uh, or Zarn Lake uh, option agreement from the Reeves family, um, Paul Reeves. And we kind of, once we kind of aggregate this together, this becomes like a very interesting area from an exploration perspective. There are numerous high grade uh, narrow hits that, you know, again, this, nothing's been tested from a low grade high tonnage uh, perspective. And we look forward to advancing this area. Again, wonderful graphics. So we have a 28, or sorry, 21.8 grams per ton gold, 184 grams per ton silver and 3.4% copper out of one of the trenches on the Zarn Lake area. And then we have blast rock. Um, this is kind of lying around the split lake area of which there's a hundred meter shaft with uh, three compartments in there as well. And this is kind of what's what's lying around the, uh, the blast rock area. Uh, moving on to the shaft zone and west zone. Uh, the west zone, unfortunately we didn't get to, but there was a significant amount of, of, of data um, from a surface surface work uh, perspective. So that also becomes a very interesting, interesting prospective area. Um, this is also adjacent and touches the uh, Goldland, um, Goldland claims uh, through Treasury Metals. Um, the uh, shaft zone, there are two shafts, uh, one that we have seen and one that we have, we didn't get to get to see. There's an interesting story there. Um, and then there's some interesting trenches and uh, drill hole results uh, underneath the trenches that we uncovered um, from historical workings. It's, there's a nice graphic in the next slide, which we can go to. So on our due diligence visit, you see the discarded core. Um, just very, it's great just to kind of, you know, go up and, and do the due diligence on, on the project and kind of put these old reports and then you kind of look and see what was done and how old it is. And it just gives the confirmation that there may be a significant amount of, of value of value to add. Um, again, this is uh, pictures. We thought it was important to share with everyone. Um, you know, kind of this is this is what the due diligence uh, visit looked like. So to the left, we have our paved highway road going through all season logging roads. This is a picture of the um, the large power line currently being installed, and then this is your average ATV trail throughout the property. So not a lot of trails that need to be created to access where we need to be. So ninety percent of our targets are um, easily accessible. This is a budget um, that we've created, kind of our dream budget on how to advance the area in total. Um, we have started uh, already planning. We're securing a uh, ground crew for um, late spring, early summer um, for some surface work. And then we're also uh, trying to solidify the uh, drilling contractors starting in uh, uh, best case September. Uh, planning that the uh, IPO goes according to plan. So what did we have? I thought it was important to discuss um, the option agreements as an aggregated option agreement. In summary, uh, cash outlay is low relative to other transactions. Uh, share count is, is, is high, but we're looking forward to having Group 10 as a significant shareholder. Uh, project spend is easily attainable at five million over fourteen thousand hectares. Um, however, it keeps us um, it keeps us honest and and making sure that we're advancing the property um, accordingly. So that that was a fantastic deal that uh, Group Ten and and Paul Reeves we all all agreed upon. Um, special note: uh, there's a ninety percent earn in after after the fourth anniversary with Group Ten. Important note is there is a pathway to one hundred percent with Group Ten on the package, and that is uh, after the five. 4 million spend. Um, there is a, uh, we have to spend 500,000 a year until the presentation of a feasibility study. Um, upon then, Group 10 has the option to either come in with us uh, joint venture as a 10% or um, take back a royalty. So we, we thought it was important to, to note there. And then we have 100% earn in with uh, Paul Reeves. Also, there is a wonderful 10% bonus payment, a dollar per ounce, up to 10 million ounces. And there is a Running joke, I, I don't think anyone on the Heritage Mining team will be opposed to uh, cutting uh, cash or share equivalent to Group 10 for 10 million ounces. That would be a uh, dream come true. Again, Contact Bay, I believe we'll uh, skip over this um, or just touch on it briefly. So we've also acquired a 4,700 hectare package. Um, can jump on to the graphic. There is uh, high grade occurrences in the northeast of the property. There's also significant 
uh, findings via drill holes of uh, nic nickel, copper, platinum, palladium um, that we're looking forward to advancing. This will be our 100% owned, uh, not optioned. Once we go public, we have to issue some uh, cash and shares upon the go public uh, transaction. So we look forward to advancing that. Oops, my back one. Again, just to briefly touch. So Patrick Moen and James Fairburn, as mentioned previously, um, have experience with uh, Trelawney. Uh, they were both directors on the transaction. Ray Carvelis, past CEO and director of DRA Global, a global mining and consulting firm. I myself is more, more of a finance background, but also have some field experience on, on, the, on our projects. So that was, uh, that was great to, to go through the bush with Mitch. Um, Patrick Sullivan, uh, Associate at Osler, also corporate secretary. Uh, notable transaction is representing uh, Kinross with the Great Bear transaction. Everybody kind of knows about that one in Ontario. And then we have Mitch Lavery. Um, Mitch, would you want to? Oh, you know what? We're we're I think we're over time here. I believe so. We should probably. We have a great group of external strategic advisors. Um, notably, the top three: Jeremy and Dave, uh, mind builder building consultants. Alex Pernan and Peter Bierez, both technical and financial experience through their field, kind of in the field work and in their current roles at Star Royalties. Our company snapshot will be uploaded on the website. I'm happy to go through. It's just nice to give everybody a, uh, an opportunity to check out the capital, the detailed capital structure. Um, and then I will leave it over um, for questions. This is a, you know, a max budget for our, our go public transaction, but I'll, I'll, uh, leave it over to uh, the moderator if there's any questions. Great, thank you for the great presentation, Peter and Mitch. Uh, so we do have a couple of questions that have come in. Um, first off, uh, is the company planning on growing the executive team and or geological teams in 2022? Uh, yeah, I can comment on that. Uh, from an executive perspective, not at the moment. Um, we're, we're okay on the executives front. Um, from a geological perspective, uh, yes, we're looking to build out um, the team. Um, we do kind of source uh, contractors now, um, but we do have kind of long for exploration, you know, working the, working the data file and, uh, you know, kind of more to come on that front. But right now we're a majority of contractor basis. Okay. Um, and then kind of on the exploration front, uh, you mentioned the geophysics, um, you know, is, is there anything else that you're going to be needing uh, before drill uh, drilling at, um, at the, the main project? Yeah, we're, we'll, uh, we'll, yeah have, we'll have prospectors on the ground uh, looking for anything uh, that shines, I guess, is the way you could put it. Okay. Yeah, so we'll be we'll be following up with the ground crew. Will be uh, ground EM and mag, uh, line cutting, IP geological evaluations, prospecting, mapping, and mechanical rock stripping is the kind of the plan program. In addition to flying EM and mag, that's uh, scheduled for this in ten days. I just had to look at the clock. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, and then. Um, uh, Let's see here. Um, so I have that question. And then um, I guess going forward, um, you know, is there, um, or sorry, what's the, the timeline uh, for going public again? Yeah, great question. So we raised, uh, we closed a recent uh, private placement and in that private placement, there's a bonus warrant if we're not public by June 30th, 2022. We're confident, confident in the team and, and the agent Red Cloud's ability to, to take us public before that time. Uh, so we're comfortable putting in, in that warrant. So we should be public uh, before June 30th, 2022 this year. Okay, perfect. Um, so with that, I believe we are right out of time. So I would like to thank uh, both Peter and Mitch uh, and everybody joining us today. Thank you. Thanks very much.